6th grade, module 4, lesson 9, classwork. Example 1, create a bar diagram to show 3 plus 5. Okay, so a bar diagram looks pretty much like a tape diagram. And we're going to have 3 plus 5, which we know is 8. So I'm just going to split in 8. And I'm going to add the 3. I'll just outline it in a different color. So we have 3 plus 5. And then the whole thing is 3 plus 5. How would this look if you were to ask to show 5 plus 3? So we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to reverse the order. So instead of 3 first, I'm going to do 5, and then we have 3. So there we have 5 plus 3. Are these two expressions equivalent? So 3 plus 5 is 8, 5 plus 3 is 8, so yes. It shows the commutative property of addition that we talked about in the last lesson. So let's say 3 plus 5 and 5 plus 3 both equal 8. Example two, how can we show a number increased by two? So this time they don't tell us the number, but we know it's increased by two. So I'm gonna say that that number is A. So let's say we have A, and then it increases by two. So A plus two. So you could say a plus 2, or because of the commutative property of addition, you could say 2 plus a. So you could flip it around, too. Can you prove this using a model? If so, draw the model. So I'm just going to flip it around, because we already drew a model, but I'm, I'll just draw the other one. So we have 2 plus a. So let's call this a, and that's a. So I'll say yes. Can you prove it? Yes. I used a bar diagram. Example three. Write an expression to show the sum of m and k. So we know the sum is the answer to an addition problem. So we're going to be adding m and k. So we would have m plus k. Or you could flip it around, k plus m because of the commutative property. Which property can be used in examples 1 through 3 to show that both expressions given are equivalent? We've been talking about it. The commutative property. And they were all addition, so we're going to say the commutative property of addition. Example four, can we show 10 minus, how can we show 10 minus six? Draw a bar diagram to model this expression. Okay, so I'm gonna draw 10, split into 10. And we wanna subtract six. I'm gonna say that the whole thing is 10, and then I'm just going to x out 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's how I would show 10 minus 6. What expression is that? That's 10 minus 6. Could we also use 6 minus 10? So is 6 minus 10 equal to the same thing as 10 minus 6? Uh, no. Uh, the commutative property only works with addition and multiplication. So, because 6 minus 10 would be equal to negative 4, whereas 10 minus 6 is 4. So, no, 
10 minus 6 equals 4, and 6 minus 10 equals negative 4. So the bottles would not match. Example five, how can we write an expression to show three less than a number? Start by drawing a diagram to model the subtraction. Are we taking away the three or the unknown? Are we taking away from the three or the unknown number? Okay, so if we wanted to know three less than a number, let's call the number n. So we have n as the whole thing and then we want to take away 3. So I'm going to call this n and then we take away 3. So what we're doing is we're taking 3 away from n, the unknown number. What expression represents this model? So that would be n minus 3. So the number minus 3. Example 6. How would we write an expression to show the number c being subtracted from the sum of a and b? Start by writing an expression for the sum of a and b. So the sum means adding of a and b. So that would be a plus b or you could write b plus a. Now show c being subtracted from the sum. So I'm just going to choose a plus b. And we're going to subtract c from the sum. Now we wanted to know, know this first. You could put parentheses around there, but they're unnecessary because the order of operations, we would do the addition first anyway. So they're not necessary in this circumstance, so I'm going to get rid of them. You could also do b plus a minus c, either of those. Example 7, write an expression to show the number c minus the sum of a and b. So this time we have c minus the sum of a and b, a plus b. This time the parentheses are necessary because, and that's the next question, because we want to subtract the sum of a and b, not just b. If we had c minus a minus plus b, we would do c minus a, and then we would add b, which would be different than if we did c minus a plus b. I'll, let's fill in some numbers. So if I had 10 minus 4 plus 2 in parentheses, that's different than this. So 10 minus, we would do 4 plus 2 is 6. 10 minus 6 is 4. If I did this, I would do 10 minus 4 first, which is 6, and then I would add 2. That would be equal to 8. So we get different answers based on where the parentheses are. So why are the parentheses necessary? So let's say without parentheses, only a is being subtracted from c and we want to subtract a plus b. Replace the variables with the numbers to see if c minus a plus b is the same as c minus a plus b. Well, looks like I'm ahead of them here. So you can just take this. That would be your answer for that. Because we already did that experiment. OK. Exercises. Number one, write an expression to show the sum of 7 and 1 and 5 tenths. So it's just an expression. We don't have to find the answer. 
So seven, the sum would mean plus, so seven plus one and five tenths, or you could write, flip it, one and five tenths plus seven. Number two, write two expressions to show w increased by four, then draw models to prove that both expressions represent the same thing. So w increased by four would be w plus four, or we could flip it around and have four plus w. So those are our two expressions. So let's show those. So we can have w plus four, we can do it that way, or if we wanted to flip it around, we don't know what w is, but I'm just gonna make four a little bit bigger, four plus w. Three, write an expression to show the sum of a, b, and c. So we're adding a, b, and c. There's different answers here. You could do a plus b plus c. You could do c plus b plus a. You could do a plus c plus b. Any order, because we're just adding the three together, so the commutative property says they can be in any order. I think there's three more options there. Number four, write an expression and a model showing three less than p. So three less than p. So if we have p, p's the whole here, and we want three less than that. So we're taking p and taking, getting three less than that, so it would be p minus three. Write an expression to show the difference of three and p. So the difference of three and p, we want to know how much is in between them. So here we would do three minus p. Number six, write an expression to show four less than the sum of g and five. So we want to know four less, so we're going to take that away from g and five, and it's the sum. We have g plus five minus four, and we don't need parentheses because we would do g plus five first anyway. You could flip these around and have five plus g minus four, too. Number seven, write an expression to show four decreased by the sum of g and five. So now we have four, this four is going to be first because we're decreasing it by the sum of g and five. This is gonna be in parentheses because we want the sum of g and five to stay together. So I'm putting parentheses because we want these to stick together. So we'd have four minus g plus five or you could do four minus five plus g. Number eight, should exercises six and seven have different expressions? Why or why not? So let's look at six and seven. So this one is four less. So we were taking it and subtracting four at the end. This one is four decreased by. So we're starting with four and then subtracting. So that's the difference between them and why they have different expressions. So yes. Uh, let's start with six, so four less than means we subtract four from the uh, sum of g and five. Yes, and then four decreased by, so there's one, four decreased by, I'll put them in parentheses so we know we're referencing the problem. Four decreased by means we start with four,
and subtract g plus 5 from 4. And that is the end of classwork.